Joining us now, National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications at the White House, retired Rear Admiral John Kirby. Admiral Kirby, thanks so much for your time this morning. We appreciate it. We've been showing video this morning of Brittany Griner touching down in San Antonio, officially back on U.S. soil. We know she'll be headed to Brook Army Medical Center uh, to get looked over. She did look good just from uh, sort of a superficial view on the plane from that Russian state uh, video that we got. Uh, what more can you tell us about her condition this morning? We, we've talked to our team on the ground who met her there, as well as the team that traveled uh, overseas with her on that airplane. They say she's in very good spirits, appears to be in good health. Uh, certainly, she's a very happy woman today, as is her family. Uh, you're right, she's now going to go to that treatment facility. She's going to get the, uh, you know, looked after by, by, uh, by docs and, and nurses there just to make sure that, uh, that everything's okay and that she's, and she's all set and ready to go back home. Um, we're going to, they'll take as much time as they need to, to do that. But again, we're, we're glad to have her back. And, and, and everything that we've seen uh, tells us that uh, she's in, in pretty good health and, and very good spirits. This was great news when it crossed yesterday morning, Admiral, and then we started getting more over the last 24 hours details about how this deal came to be uh, going back several months. I know you all have been working on getting her home. What was the pivot point? At what point did you say, okay, it looks like we're going to have yeah. a deal. We're going to get her home. It all kind of came together, Willie, uh, last week. So about a week or so ago uh, is when we uh, realized we were actually getting to some sort of closure here on this particular deal. Uh, now, again, we tried four months uh, to get both Paul and Brittany home together. That was the goal, to get them both. Um, but it became very apparent, certainly uh, late last week, that the only deal possible was uh, Brittany Griner for Victor Boot. Um, and the president made uh, the, the decision to, to go ahead and execute the deal. And then the last 96 hours or so, uh, last four or five days, have really been w uh, spent on working out the logistics of the actual exchange, location, timing, all that kind of thing. In terms of their crimes, or in Brittany Griner's case, alleged crimes, there is no comparison, obviously. She was arrested for having vape cartridges. Victor Boot is known as the merchant of death. By our yeah. own admission, the State Department, the Justice Department, just one of the worst people currently walking the face of the earth. So how did you measure this? You all have come, come under criticism for this being a very unequal deal in terms of what we gave up to get Brittany Griner home. How do you answer that criticism? And nobody's doing backflips over here uh, about the fact that Mr. Boot is, uh, is a free man. He would have been a free man six years from now. Uh, so we're going to watch this, obviously, very, very closely, uh, make sure that we can protect our national security uh, with him back on the street. Uh, but again, it just became apparent, uh, Willie, that the only way to secure even one of the two, and in this case it was Brittany, she was... Uh, was to release Mr. Boot. Um, and the president made uh, the very tough decision uh, that we need to get uh, at least one of these two Americans home, and he was willing to, to, uh, to make that trade. It was, a, it was not a decision that he took lightly. I mean, no, no, nor would we ever. Uh, but we're going to make sure, now that he's a free man, uh, that we're looking after our national security interests and we're as vigilant as we can be. Um, Victor Boot returns to a Russia radically different than the one that he left. It is a country that is uh, getting pushed around on the battlefield by Ukraine. It's a country that is economically uh, in, in, in the most dire straits it's been in uh, in, in decades. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a country that's actually getting hit uh, within Russia by, by artillery from Ukraine. I'm, I'm curious. Uh, how do you see this war going over the next three, four, five, six months? Yeah. So, Joe, I think um, winter's coming, um, and uh, it's a tough, tough physical environment in Ukraine. So I, I think we, we don't have any expectation that the fighting's going to stop just because of winter. But it will be harder for both armies uh, to conduct ground operations and even air operations uh, as the weather turns bad uh, over the next couple of months. Uh, the ground will harden in February, March, uh, and that'll make it easier for ground operations uh, to, re to resume uh, in a larger scale. Uh, I suspect that, uh, that the Russians will want to take some time uh, over the course of the next couple of months to try to replenish themselves. Uh, what we're going to do, uh, including in coming days, we're going to continue to make sure that that we are getting Ukraine the weapons and the systems that they need so that they can continue the fight, that they can continue to defend themselves, whether it's over the course of the, a very cold, long winter or, or well into the spring, whatever that takes, we're going to make sure that they've got the tools they need.
And, and what are the concerns um, inside the, the White House with uh, the attacks inside of Russia itself? Well, again, the Ukrainians haven't talked about the, those attacks specifically, uh, Joe, so I'm not going to speak uh, for military operations uh, on their part. Uh, I would just tell you that uh, our focus is making sure they can defend themselves on their territory. And we have from the beginning, and Joe, you and I have talked about this, I mean, we have from the very beginning uh, been mindful uh, of escalation concerns here. And I recognize that Russia has escalated this conflict. I know that they have made it more violent on the Ukrainian people, uh, but we, we have always been concerned about not letting this war escalate beyond that, beyond making it what Putin claims it is, a war against the West versus Russia, because that's not good for the Ukrainian people uh, to, to have it, uh, to have the war escalate to that nature. So we have been mindful of that concern. Admiral, good morning. It's uh, Jonathan Lemire. One of the remarkable things about this prisoner swap is that it did come against the backdrop of war, where there was really no communication uh, on many levels between the West and Moscow. But this channel was open. This channel was open to talk about a prisoner swap. There's obviously been a lot of debate in the last 24 hours about the fate of Paul Whelan. Uh, and I know you have said that the White House tried to get him home now, too. It couldn't happen now. But is that channel still open? What where do you go from here? What moves could still be made to try to bring him home as well? Are you still talking to the Russians? Yes, the channel's still open. And yes, we are uh, actively working uh, to try to get Paul home. Uh, they treated him very differently based on the sham espionage charges that they levied against him. They put him in a special category that just made it impossible at this moment for us to get both of them home, uh, certainly in, in exchange for Mr. Boot. So we're going to keep that conversation going. Um, and we expect that uh, we're going to continue to work on this. Uh, as the president said this yesterday, uh, nothing changes about the effort Effort to try to get Paul home, uh, we're just going to we're, we're going to keep at this. But it was a it was based on the fact that they have put him in a different category uh, on these charges that that just made this particular trade impossible. Admiral, did the Russians propose a one for one swap where you could choose either Brittany Griner or Paul Whelan, or was it just Brittany Griner or nothing? Yeah, I think for in, in this case, the deal was uh, boot for Brittany. Uh, that that was uh, as far as it was going to go. And so we were left with, uh, do we bring Brittany home and execute this swap, get an American citizen back home to her family where she belongs, or get none of them? Because it just wasn't going to work getting, uh, getting both of them. And now, look, as I said to Jonathan, we are still working this. So obviously, we're going to be careful what we put out in the public space in terms of the ongoing negotiations. Uh, but we, we know now and we know better uh, what the Russians are looking for here with respect to Mr. Whalen, and, and we're going to stay at that task. But the Russians never proposed a boot for Whalen swap, one for one? Uh, there, there was, uh, there was, they put Paul in a different category. Uh, and so the only person that they were willing uh, to trade uh, boot for was Brittany Griner. And do you feel like, Admiral, the United States has the bargaining chips? Is there another Victor Boot toiling in a prison somewhere to offer Russia to get Paul Whelan home? We're working on these negotiations uh, very hard right now, uh, uh, Willie. So I, I think you can understand why I'm not going to talk about uh, what options we might or might not have uh, at this moment. Uh, we're, we're, we're working this hard, and I think the, it's better that we do this uh, not in the public eye. Fair enough. Caddy Kay? Uh, John, obviously the, the Russians will sell this as a, a win because it was in some senses an asymmetric swap. Do, are you concerned at the, um, the message this sends around the world that Russia managed to get this notorious arms dealer out in exchange for somebody who was a basketball player with a much less severe crime? And then quickly on what you're, how concerned you are that this also sends a message to authoritarian countries that, you know, if you pick up a, an American and hold them captive, you will get something in exchange for that, that America is now open for business in the negotiating. Well, so we have made it harder. Uh, the president has put into place uh, 
uh, visa restrictions, sanctions, other accountability measures to make it harder for hostage takers to succeed at this. Um, and so we don't think that that's a, a valid message that anybody should be taking away uh, from this. But it's not a new tactic for Mr. Putin, Caddy. You know that uh, that this is this is not something new that it, he just discovered with Brittany Griner. This idea of taking foreigners, particularly Americans, and then trying to trade for something uh, as a concession. That's why uh, the State Department has a new designation for countries around the world, including Russia, about the detention risk. And so if you're going to travel overseas, whether it's for pleasure or for work, uh, we want you to go to the State Department website and look at what that risk is so that you can travel fully informed. Uh, but we're going to we're going to try to make sure that, that that we limit the ability, restrain the ability uh, for hostage takers to, to be successful uh, about this. That said, if you do everything right and you get taken and it's wrongfully it's a wrongful detention uh, as a sham uh, under sham legal purposes like it was for Brittany and for Paul. You need to know as an American here at home that this president and this administration is going to work to bring you home. And if it means making tough decisions, and this was not an easy decision, uh, that, that the president's willing to do that. Uh, we made an assessment here uh, about Mr. Boot before this exchange, a national security assessment. Uh, that was done. Uh, we're going to continue to make sure we can protect our national security interests going forward, whether it's against a guy like Mr. Boot or, or, or anybody else. And Brittany Griner is home in the United States this morning, and the work continues to get Paul Whelan home. National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications at the White House, retired Rear Admiral John Kirby. Admiral Kirby, thanks for your time this morning. We appreciate it.